what, what should we do? Because we do a lot of different things. This isn't the only thing we do. Huh. And I watched them covet our style, our confidence, natural rhythm, our terms of endearment, but not our struggle, and the products of the ghetto. Okay, sorry. Because I'll be honest with you, I have had a different Yeah. I regret it every single day. Right. You, I did it. But you've been forgiven? You. Yes. Yeah. But when people like me, who still cry to this day about it, and they see this, mm -hmm. it makes us want nothing to do with whatever you're about. Well, but... I mean, I, 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 I understand that. From standpoint, for those that have Haven't not been through that committed experience. Committed it yet. Yeah. Yeah. But this. But let I me mean, just just so you know our heart, what we're doing. We do we do understand that it's traumatizing, but there are women in our group who have also had abortions, but they've like given that sin to Christ. They've do you been feel forgiven like seeing, and healed. Little kids seeing this is okay to see. Little kids. Little kids haven't ha haven't sinned in that way, so they just see it and they say, "Mommy, why why did it why has someone done this to a baby?" Like my my but what my I'm two year old is, daughter is just the graphic nature of it. Does it traumatize them? So there's no study or any material that because suggests that. Because I had to that, explain that to my five year old. Yeah. What those pictures were and why they're showing that to people. And it said this is something wrong that people do to their children when they're not ready to have them or. Or are we are we the bad guy for showing it, or is the culture the bad guy for allowing it, doing it, protecting it? I think there's it? a lot of different things. I think that yeah, it's wrong, but yeah. I also think that standing here on a street corner when there's better ways to yeah. go out and spread the word instead of being like, I just feel like there's a better way to do it. Well, there's more than one way to do. People, we go door to door. That's better we're because online. I feel like this, this is offensive to a lot of people here in the Norman area because a lot of them are super liberal. You gotta take into those demographics. That's okay though. We're not. We're, but this we're is trying not to bring expose. anybody into Christ. So, so you're a follower of Christ. Yes, I am. So, so Christ and his apostles and all the prophets before him said, "Listen, if there's injustice going on in your midst, if fatherless children are being brutally murdered and you do nothing to stand against it, I, you are but guilty that, as that, well." That's a different thing than being in your face and well, this, saying, "This, this, this, basically, this so knoll not here." Do it lovingly. Oh yeah, we're not trying to be unloving. I mean, because I wouldn't this, yell at anyone. Because this is not very loving. What What is unloving? Standing on a street corner with pictures of mutilated babies. No, these are pictures of human beings creating the image of God. Who, when they were in their mother's womb, Which have wombs, then become mutilated babies yes. because of someone's yeah. decision. So do you think that the so, Germans who opposed the Nazi Holocaust by showing pictures of it, people who said, you know what, slavery isn't that bad, and the abolitionists of slavery showed pictures of slaves with their backs whipped, and people like you in that culture said, don't show the horrendous nature of slavery. So, Because I'm just shooting straight with you. There are people who have denied the Holocaust. There are people who right. denied the evils of slavery. And it was whenever people like us brought the images out, they said, okay, I cannot deny it. I, but then I, I know. I, my whole point No, here, we're talking about something far worse than the Holocaust. My whole point here is that standing million. here on a corner as a Christian, mm -hmm. seeing people that are this in your face when I already struggle with going to church, because it's bigger than just right. the abortion, because yes, abortion is wrong. Right. But being so in your face about it and not in a loving way. Well, we're not being unloving. But what no I'm one's yelling. What I, no what one's I'm doing you anything. Is that people that wicked. go by this are going to see? Oh, there's there's those Christians trying to be in your face. If you read the signs, I have read the signs. I've driven up and down the street about like six this, times today. Okay, this sign it says, "If you're opposed to us showing the graphic images, why don't you help us abolish it?" Like you got to understand, it is like less than half a mile away from here is where they're doing this to children. <laughs> on a regular basis. The large abortion image over here is a first trimester abortion image. That goes on at least, all of this. I, I know, understand. it goes on like 30 times. The problem is, is people think we're being unloving and in your face, but they're just driving around trying to get home to their TiVos. So what we think is unloving is covering up the evil. I think when young women go get abortions, oftentimes, you know, everyone's got a different story but would they be doing it as often if they lived in a culture where they regularly saw ultrasounds? They regularly heard that it was sin. They regularly heard. Why don't you try and change it at the clinic? We do, we go to the clinic. We go to the clinic, the high schools, the churches. We go to the streets. We're online. We assist people. We've got our houses open. We, we adopt. I get that it's hidden. Believe me, I get that it's hidden. Like when, when you had your abortion, I'm, 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 
just correct. I don't want to like go over it in a way that's false. But when you had your abortion, were you fully aware of what you were doing? That you were murdering an image bearer? Because to me, when a woman goes and has an abortion, they're murdering an image bearer of my God, whom I am to love with all my heart, soul, and mind. They are taking one of my neighbors, the least of my neighbors, the smallest and littlest, most defenseless, innocent neighbor to be pulled out. A very small, small neighbor. Let me just tell you. Yes. I get all this. I was raped. Okay. okay. I found out that I was pregnant. I was seven weeks pregnant. And when you are 23 mm. and seven weeks pregnant and you have mm. no, you don't know a single person around here. You don't know yeah. who the father is. And your doctor's like, well, I mean these are your choices you get scared yeah oh I know our culture so we're at war with the culture the culture that came around you frightened already victimized right rape is wrong like it's wrong it's evil the same reason that abortions wrong rape is wrong it's a stronger person taking advantage of a weaker person so I get that but our culture it, that girl in that situation, they think, take to a clinic, get to take care of. But the truth of the matter is, is what you're doing is you're protecting the rapist because you're destroying the evidence of his crime. You are protecting the rapist because the rapist knows that these children aren't going to conception because he lives in a culture that constantly says abortion in the case of rape is valid. Now we know, and you may know, plenty of women who have been raped, have conceived children, and love the children of as their own. The thing is, is when we are fighting the battle for abolition in the culture and we're wearing it down, we would be, we'd be suggesting like on one of our websites, PromoteRedemption.com, that rather than when a girl is raped, her family, her society, and her church saying, there's this way, coming around her, surrounding her, helping her, talking to her seriously about what are we thinking here? Adoption, most abortions, perfectly healthy mothers, perfectly healthy babies. They just, you know, don't want to have. Abortion is not the kind of sin that like, you don't, you don't wake up one morning and go, I think I'm gonna have an abortion. You know I mean? People are not there. I mean, maybe someone, but by and large, people are not waking up and going in abortion. They're walking a path, but they're living in a culture that's full of sin, sinful decisions and choices, and choices that they've been making that lead them there. So people get abortions for all sorts of reasons. You're in, a, you're in an affair. Your husband's got his two ties. You're, you, got a, you got a baby inside. What do you do with that? Do you tell your husband, oh, I've been cheating on you? No, you get an abortion. You are, you are, uh, you're the preacher's daughter. I pray that you've given it to Christ and just like said, hey, this is sin. It was a bad situation, but I, I'm just shooting straight. You did evil in response to evil, like instead of good in the face of evil, but you still can confess it. And Christ is basically saying, if you confess your sin, if you just give it to me, don't hold on to it, don't justify it, don't say you were in the right, just say it was wrong, it was wicked, I did it because I wasn't following you. He takes it, it's crucified. That's what, it's, that's what it means. Like Christ is actually willing to take murderers, rapists, the worst of the worst people and say, if you confess that to me, I will forgive you. I will heal you. I don't know if it's going to make everything in your life happy, like you're never going to remember your abortion, but you don't have to justify it. You can just say it was sin and Jesus saved sinners and he right. saved me from it. But back to my original point, this conversation mm -hmm. that we have had, yeah. I feel like it's been... I feel like it, it's more beneficial to have a conversation like this. Right. No, me too. Me it's too, but see, but here's, the, here's, like the, here's the big kicker. We would not have had this conversation, were we not? I'm sorry. When you're waking the culture up to a Holocaust going on in their midst, 
I mean, we even call it agitating. Not because we like, like it. Let's go agitate the people. We say like, well, it's, this is agitating. This is like salt. Like if everyone out here had open wounds, we're like salt. It's like whenever you drive by, you have an open wound. It's salt. Whenever someone drives by, has never had abortion, is against abortion or whatever, it's, it's not as salty. But when someone drives by and they're like an evangelical Christian, and they're very serious, and they see a sign that says, Christian, every child aborted is, is your neighbor, they add apathy as a sin, and it's salt. And so they're like, I'm mad at those guys because they're standing out there. It's hot. I'm going to get custard, and they're standing out there. So that's agitating. You know, it's also like light. Like the Bible says that men love darkness, and like the light came into the world, and they hated it because they like to hide or they like to suppress the truth and scurry around in the dark, get away with things. And so light is kind of agitating. So if you've lost your saltiness and if you hide your light, how can you claim to know me, to follow me, to keep my commandments? And my commandments are simple. Like Jesus said, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Every child created in the image of God, whether they are rape conceived, Down syndrome, cleft palate, perfect, biologically, created in the image of God. Every child, our neighbor, the littlest ones, the weakest ones, the ones who are most marked out to die, which in our culture are probably severe fetal abnormalities. You go in, they say, well, your child might, might have Down syndrome. They get marked out, they could die. Jesus said, love the least of these. I mean, I'm How is this showing preaching. love to people? Well, this is, we believe that, you know, I'd, I'd say like evangelical Christians believe generally that if you show someone their sin, you say, this is sin. This is bad. This is bad stuff. And the bad news is, is that God hates, like it actually says in the Bible, God hates the shedding of innocent blood. Like he hates it. And so that's bad news because like God hates, I mean, that's, God hates people who shed innocent blood. This is bad news. God will judge all sin. So that's bad news. So we are, we are showing the bad news, but the good news is, is that there's forgiveness for the sin. That yeah. I'm not negating that at all. But what I'm saying is when people drive by and see yeah. this and they're seeing yeah. the salt on the wounds and the agitation, yeah. how does that bring people into know Christ well, and, because that that's my concern between I that agree. and the graphic nature how does yeah. that how does that bring the ultimate good the better I, the better step than just pissing people off yeah. and then being like f you see the thing is is I totally agree were it not for like the providence of God and like that he's like working in in ways to like draw people to himself I would have a problem with that it's like if I didn't believe in the providence of God it's like every urine sin sign would have to have a but there's forgiveness in Christ sign right there next to it. But every time you had a there's forgiveness in Christ sign, you'd have to have a, but you have to actually confess and repent. But I do believe that like what God is doing is people are driving by. Some of them are very angry with us. Some of them are giving us the sort of like thumbs up thing. And it's just, it's all over the board. I don't know. We pray, we come out, we do it. 13 year old girl drives by, sees it. Three years from now, dad says, we got to take care of this. And she says, no, because she's got this image burned in her head. I don't know. I, you read about that. You get Facebook messages about that. You, you, you hear about it later. But we come out here, you know, we have a sign that says, stop, stop ignoring your neighbor who's being destroyed by abortion. I mean, you're, you're, you're unlike most people, you stop and talk. There are pastors driving by here who are more mad at us than any pro-choicer because they know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, love your neighbor as yourself. If you do not do these things, you are not my disciple. They know that. And then they think, well, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna drive by these guys who are my neighbors, my brothers, fellow Christians. I'm gonna say they're doing it wrong and they're gonna keep on driving and they're gonna take a left up here and they're gonna go by the abortion mill. They don't even know where the abortion mill is. They think we're fanatics for knowing where the abortion mill is and then we go there. 
but they're the priest and the Levite in the parable of the Good Samaritan. So there are lots of Christians who are driving by who are actually literally sort of like, what's your, what's your problem? And what they don't realize is we're calling them to repentance just as much as we're calling, you know, those who've had abortions. But it's, it, I mean, I'm going way off. It's all up in the air. It's all, all up in the, you know, kind of the wind of providence. Like, let God do what he will with it. And if some of these people hate us, that's what we're willing to be hated to expose evil, like it says in Ephesians 5.11, not just abstain from it, and to shine his lights in the midst of a dark generation. The only reason this looks weird is because everybody else kind of approves of it, either full-blown or tacitly, as in, you know, look in the other direction. Let, let me just tell you, I'm not a perfect Christian. No, it Christ is perfect. <laughs> Christ is perfect, and he is, he is perfecting us. He is rooting out the sin in our hearts and the things that we hold dear, and he is he's chiseling us. He's making, like, God through the Spirit working in us, those who are hidden in Christ are being chiseled out like clay to be more like Jesus. That's what he's doing. He's making us holy. And as someone who believes that, someone that, that's going on with me, I will just tell you for him, he loves you, he knows your sin, he wants so badly for you to just give it to him, just to confess it, say it's sin, and let him take it to the cross, because that's what he did. He looked at it, he looked at the situation, he looked at man, wickedness, all the, all the evil stuff that we had done and would do, and he says, oh man, Father is holy, hates sin, sin must be punished. In the metaphysics of God, sin must be punished. He's holy. And Jesus says, I'll take it. And I will go on to this cross. All the wrath, all the wickedness, everything they do against you, pour it out on me so they don't have to be held accountable for it. That would be your abortion. But there is forgiveness in Christ. There is healing. There is taking awful, awful stuff and turning it beautiful. The only thing, the only thing is faith, confession, repentance, following Christ rather than following yourself. That's all there is. It's not like you have to be so good to get into heaven. Right. You know these things. I know. I'm preaching you the choir, but I want you to know, you have to know that yes, when you see these things, it may be painful. And, and sometimes you see these things that the bozos may have forgotten to bring a sign to tell you that there's forgiveness. But that's what you grab onto. You, you see that, you know, sin is there and you've done it. Right. If Christ has I saved know. you from it, <laughs> if Christ has saved you from it, don't defend it. Don't defend it. But that's what you grab onto. You, you see that, you know, sin is there and you've done it right if christ has I saved know. you from it <laughs> if christ has saved you from it don't defend it don't defend it don't hold on to your abortion if you can confess it to christ oh i've confessed it just does it does it, i mean i'm not and there's healing yeah. that takes there's a lot of healing that takes place i'm glad you stopped because i want to affirm it for you so you don't so you don't forget I, let me put you in remembrance of this thing. Christ knows what you did, why you did it, and what you could have done instead. Knows. But he has not turned you over. He has not said, because you've done this, I will not have you as a daughter. He said, because you've done this, and because you've brought it to me. Like in the parable of the prodigal son. I will slaughter the fattened calf. I will put jewelry on you. I will invite you to a feast. That's what he said. And out here, but that has our, 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 
web address and on I it. Them covered, I just like a little card my wife had in here. Terms of but not our anyway, if you ever want to contact us, talk her. Even join us. We may need stuff. Homies not stupid can so. tell the difference between admiration and mockery, please. So we protected our music because truthfully we thought it was all we had. And watch, I'll make a killing off it. Hip hop to jazz. Elvis the fat I mean, domino Patrick. I was a pro lifer. I was voting pro life. I was giving $100 to the Crisis Pregnancy Center. I did that for like five or six years. I started following Christ. You know, I just kind of started like not living for myself. And lo and behold, it's led me to do some kind of crazy things like sending him a sign.